I guess first off, just kind of you've been through two of these now, getting these uniforms changed. What is an equipment manager's role in this process? Well, first, if you don't mind, I'd like to give a shout out to all the first responders, the nurses, doctors, um, firemen, police officers, and everybody who's out in the battlefield um, fighting this horrible virus. So I just want to let everybody know we thank them very much for their services. Um, but as far as what an equipment guy's role is um, in this whole process, the process starts if it is going to be a complete uniform change with color changes and design changes starts two years before the actual uniforms to be worn. So our organization and our uniform team has to sign a form, send it to the NFL office to say, look, we're going to be changing these down the road. Um, with us at that point in time, there's kind of like a mediator with the NFL that will kind of coordinate the communication between our uniform team and Nike. They'll decide exactly what their plan is, what their vision is, and what they want to see. And then they'll come up with some first, first protos or photos, if you will, and diagrams of what it may look like. And at that point, we kind of come in and say, you know, do we see something wrong with it? Do we think it can happen? And even they ask for our approval. And, you know, that's kind of where it goes for a while back and forth. And we really don't get involved until we actually have a physical jersey, pants, and socks in hand. And then we'll make sure that the colors are good, make sure that, you know, um, whether we're going to screen the striping on the, on the jersey sleeve or we're going to use a knit fabric, um, little small nuances like that, and just make sure the overall look of the uniform is good. And um, after, you know, we get done, we'll sit down with everybody. And once we uh, sign off and everything, we uh, wait for the jersey to start being produced. So I guess then for this this timeline, where, where about in the in the season were you, and and how, how did it how did how did this change kind of come about from your end uh, as a timeline? As a timeline, um, as far as right now, as far as what we're going to be doing, as far as producing these jerseys, uh, you go back beyond before and then to where you to where you are now. I guess if you can. Yeah, you know, it was just the, the small little meetings that we had originally, you know, upon the plan. And then the, the actual meetings, once the design was pretty much secured, are we going to run into any issues with the new uniform coming in? Now, Nike has, you know, when we switched over to Nike back in 2012, we went from a Reebok jersey to what they called was their speed machine jersey. So mm -hmm. their speed machine jersey is one that we currently use right now with the exception of our color rush is what we're going into. Our current color rush jersey right now is what they call a vapor untouchable little less inserts involved in that jersey uh, dynamic. And that's, the, that's kind of the vision we saw to get out of the speed machine, go into the Vapor Untouchable, and then um, see what happens from there on. Okay, and then what, going forward then, what is the process looking like for you once we get these rolled out and, and what, what goes into that? Well, it's kind of a, this has created a very difficult situation for us in the sense that um, Rip On Manufacturing, who produces our jerseys up in Wisconsin, their plant is closed down. So normally we would have our seamstress, Becky, start producing and completing all the jerseys and she'd be getting started right now. But what we need to do is we're gonna forward all the sizes for all the players, the current players, and the ones, you know, free agent signings and so forth. We're gonna send those sizes to Rip On and then they're gonna produce two jerseys per player. So we will have manufactured or have Ripon manufactured 360 jerseys for our primary white and our primary brown. So, you know, we got our fingers crossed. It always seems to be a little bit of a headache. Um, and you're always kind of waiting on, you know, jerseys last minute, you know, when you have uniform changes, keeping our fingers crossed just to make sure that, you know, um, we're ahead of the game and, you know, we won't run into any issues with, with Ripon. And then can you kind of, from your perspective, you've seen a, a bunch of different jerseys for this team, the, the originals, then the new ones, and then now kind of these new ones now. What are the differences that you see between these jerseys and the ones that were last worn in 2014? You know what? It's kind of a very similar jersey from 2014. Um, it kind of goes back. And what I like about it, it's, it's like going forward with the Cleveland Browns. It's paying respect to, to this organization and to the storied franchise of what the Browns is all about and paying respect to those players um, from the past. I like the conservative look. I like the way it is. I think they did a great job in the production and the design of this uniform. 
And I, for one, am extremely happy because I think this is really, truly represents what the Browns are, are really all about. And then you, you, there are some subtle differences, though, right, between this and 2014 that, that you can kind of pick up? Or is there anything? Yeah, the striping's different. You know, you're going to have uh, some variances with striping. Um, as far as really the, the size of the striping's a little different. You know, you're talking quarters of an inch or an inch here. And then the technology of the jersey, you said, is it has remained the same since coming with Nike, or how, how have these jerseys kind of evolved? from? Yeah, this? they like I said before, they started out with the Speed Machine jersey. Yeah. Um, they, they transferred over into a uh, the Vapor Untouchable, which is going to be what we're wearing this coming season. We did wear it last season with the Color Rush jersey. Um, it's got less inserts. The fabric is a little more um, stretchable. Uh, it's performance oriented compared to the speed machine. Um, and ironically enough, not ironically enough, but unfortunately Nike is going into a new system next year. Um, actually it's, it'll be two years down the road because they just canceled with everything going on. Um, it's called the fuse, which is okay. recy recyclable fabric. Um, and we will make a decision down the road, whether we're going to get into that or not. And if it's definitely a performance advantage, you'll see us switching into that system. Now, a uniform change won't happen. I mean, the design and everything will stay the same. It'll just transfer over to the new uniform system, if you will. And then I guess you guys, you're around those, those players and everything like that. I imagine the color rush was something that went over well with those guys. And it's, it's oh, good. To, yeah. yeah. And then yeah. I imagine that there are some, some subtle changes to that Jersey too, but just the, the popularity that those had down. down yeah. Down. You know what? And I think uh, it was a great move. Um, um, by upper management requesting to change over it because it was definitely a fan favorite of the players, like you said. Um, and I love the jersey. I really did. Uh, we did go brown on brown years ago, and I want to say that was on a Thursday night game or a Monday night game where we went all brown. And um, mm -hmm. it really didn't get a lot of good reviews at that point in time. But now that times have changed a little bit, um, yeah, the Color Rush jersey was a big hit. You're not going to see – the striping on the sleeves or the pants in the color rush jersey this year. Uh, it's very simplistic and it's, it's uh, a great looking uniform and they all are for that matter.